Let me read something for your hearing. Any person that resists disrupting this meeting will be in violation of Sun City Code Section 3112, disorderly conduct, disorderly persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents a peaceful and orderly conduct of this meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting this meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Your time is up. You ain't no longer councilman. You don't represent people. Shut up and go home. I was poisoned as a child by GE with 28 different toxins. My bones and my muscles are deteriorating. Your nasty flint water made it worse. Worse, I tell you. The hair was falling out. I've had the rashes. My teeth are falling out. My cousin was poisoned in utero. And you have the nerve. You have the nerve to tell them you're going to foreclose on their house because they don't want to pay for the poison that poisoned their children. Before the mayor got into office, she advocated no one pay his bill. Concerned pastors advocated no one pay their bill. The mayor didn't even pay her bill in 2013. She just paid it in October last year. All right, let me say something here. How you gonna advocate for nobody to pay their bill over a year and a half, and then once you get the job that the people put you in for $90,000 to where you can afford a bill, you wanna shut off people's water and then put tax liens in on, on their houses where they still can't even use the water. We are worse off now than we were back then. We didn't have shut offs, we didn't have tax liens, and then we won't put the, we won't put the blame where it's supposed to be. The mayor did not have to enforce this ordinance. She didn't enforce anything else. She didn't have to enforce this. And for them to sit there and try to fight you last city council meeting when you said that you spoke to Sabuda about it. Sabuda didn't want to work with you. You said, I got to work with him. I said, don't. Do an ordinance to just wipe it out. Put the names to it. Don't say them. Who is them? The big, Sabuda, Angela Willis. That's who it is. Keep this as simple mathematics. One plus one is two. And if you're poor and you get a water bill for two or three hundred dollars and you can't pay it, then the interest and in it go across the street. And as years go on, you get so much interest every February, you almost triple. And before you know it, your pension can't even cover. And so my whole point in the matter of this is I'm going to be straight, open, and transparent from my own personal belief that I think this is nothing but a scheme and a conspiracy to run all the poor poverty stricken people. <laughs> Y'all don't conduct this meeting. How about five minutes at your own house? Y'all is getting to be a little much. Y'all didn't let this get to the You started it. They, they followed the lead. So my position, my position is this. The whole issue before y'all even got here from out of town was high water. Ma'am, please, can't you handle it when people talk? And did you learn this? And what did y'all learn? It's 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 Mr. Mason, rest and stop trying You started it at the beginning of the meeting, Mr. President. You said there no rules. You can't come here every two weeks and just listen to us. You have to do something. We've heard that the council says, well, we're, you know, we're the, the legislative body. I'm going to ask you, what have you legislated in the last four years? <laughs> what have you changed in the last four years in our ordinance? Thank you. The answer is nothing. Thank you. I just had to pay, get my house out of foreclosure. Yes, I am one of the ones that, because of a water, then you turn around and put another water lien on my house. So, you know what I did? I said, you know what? It's not that I don't want to um, pay that. It's just that they have really stripped us from us the, the democracy, and Arthur Wilson said it well. We don't always agree, but he said it well about the recall with the government. It did happen. Yeah, it did. So instead of me complaining, I came to city council before, a week or two ago, and I thought y'all should do something. I'm glad that you guys did this meeting. So I took initiative to sue the city. I did it on June 13th. Can I get on with you? because um, I feel that we are being done wrong. Once I get in court, I'll be asking for a class action lawsuit to add all the other 8,000 residents on this lawsuit because it is ridiculous that they trying to even make us pay for water. If I go to the store and I get a bad product, I'm gonna go back and get my money back. 
the city of Flint has not gave the city residents any kind of money back or credit. It's a difference. We want our money back for this water that we had to pay for that we can't drink and bathe in. Thank you. Thank you. If temporary or partial impairment to the property rights that a lien or other attachment or encumbrance entails are imposed without sufficient due process protections, you are violating our constitutional rights. So basically, you have to prove that the bills you're sending us is worth more than the damages that the water has caused us. And since the water itself has no value, that means our bills should be zero starting from April 24th, 2014. Thank you. So, uh, that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I'm one of the water customers that receive a tax lien on my property as well. Um, I refused to pay for poisonous water back in 2014, 15, and 16. So yes, $1,800 has been placed on my property with the threat of losing my property, my home, for this. <clears throat> um, this is sad that we came to this day, that our residents have been continuing to fight, protest, rally, and even bring in their children, showing you know the, the water that caused upon them physically, mentally, emotionally, and yet our council sit here and act like they're powerless. I don't know why you are not as outraged as we are. You know, and if, if you guys are going to fight for a moratorium with um, this water lien, um, with our water rates, whatever, you guys got to show us some effort. You know, we stood out there for the recall of Snyder. Not one time did you guys join in unity and stand with us. We were out there by ourselves. We're tired of being out there by ourselves when we elected a leadership to represent us. I, I, I heard Ward 3 had 500. Uh, tax liens, I think, for that beginning of this meeting. I would think it'd be really useful for you to look at each of your wards and make sure there's not a disparate impact here. Make sure that there's not one group of people that, is, that are being preferentially targeted here. Um, because we know that there's more than 8,000 people that are behind on their bills. And so I kind of wonder where those 8,000 people that are being targeted live. And, and I think it'd be useful to you to, to investigate that. I'll be outside with the recall petition for Mayor Weaver. <laughs> Anybody that wants to sign can come outside and sign, and I'll be here tomorrow and Saturday and Friday too. So instead of complaining, I got a solution. Recall her, you'll remove Gilchrist, Woodrow you'll Stanley. remove Woodrow Stanford, <laughs> Point, 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 point
Quick question. Yeah. Um, so you spoke very passionately uh, about stopping these tax liens. Uh, do you do you feel the mayor's doing enough? Obviously, she could overturn this uh, if she wants to. No, she's not doing enough. She hasn't done enough since she got in office. But people got hoodwinked because of the water crisis. This vote to get her in here was on people's emotions, and that busted a rat had and ran for mayor. That. The rep would have probably won because of people's emotions. People voted thinking she was Jesus' daughter for the term water to wine, not so. Now they see what they got. I think it's a conspiracy. I think it's a part of trying to run people out of the city. A lot of people have voiced concern about this land bank, mm -hmm. that uh, the land bank is taking, uh, taking ownership of a lot of these homes, and it's an effort to gentrify. It's, it is an effort to gentrification, and that's my point in saying that they want people to leave Flint. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's wrong to do the poverty-stricken people like this, and I think whatever agenda that they once had, I think they should abort it because it's been exposed due to the water crisis. I think they should move in some other directions, in some other area. Let's talk about economic and development to keep the people here, to make the people become a uh, 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 prospect to living in affluent communities. Last question, speaking of affluent, you think if this water crisis would have happened in Ann Arbor or Grand Rapids? It would have been corrected last year, maybe two years ago. They probably wouldn't have been paying their water bill. They wouldn't have been paying the water bill. And I think that's the first thing that I found that the mayor was very much neglectful on. She should have told or made uh, some form of provisions with the governor when it first was on the scene, hot on the market, that she should have told him or asked him can we prevent our people from paying another water bill until this situation is, is completely uh, corrected? I'm uh, Jordan with the Young Turks. I just wanted to ask where the investigation is. Do any invest them in any uh, interviews, okay? Well, you're overseeing the investigation into at least one of the cases. Can you tell me where the investigation's at? I don't do any, in, any interviews, okay? Why don't you do any interviews? You're paid by the public.